Hey everyone, it's Nick from Scientone Amps. Today we're going to go over rectification and specifically tube rectifiers and solid state rectifiers and what the differences are between the two. And at the end of the video, we're going to play a little clip with an amplifier that allows you to change between the two of them to see if we can hear the difference. So before we get into the technical details, I just kind of want to go over what a guitar player may hear or feel while they're playing on an amp with a tube rectifier versus one with a solid state rectifier. Really it comes down to the biggest difference is the touch and the feel of the amp. Being on a tube rectifier makes the voltage available in a certain way that notes have a certain touch or bloom to them. That's really kind of one of the common terms that people use. There's a sag to it and a compression. It makes the amp more vocal. But then solid state rectifier makes the voltage available a little bit faster and more immediate. So the response of the notes as you hit them is firm and immediate and has a little bit more aggression to it. So those are some of the terms that people will use to describe the difference between the two before getting all technical. To get into rectification and what it actually does in the power supply, we have to start at the beginning. And the very first component is the power transformer. As you can see here in this graphic, we're looking at the left side of it is what's called the primaries, and that's what's coming out of the wall. So your typical AC voltage coming out of the wall in the U.S. is going to be about 120 volts AC. On the right side, you have what's called the secondaries, and that's what steps up the voltage to the high voltage that we need for the amplifier to operate. However, it is still an AC and is not the DC voltage we need just yet. What we're going to be talking about here is a common type of rectification called full wave rectification. There are other kinds of rectification such as half wave or bridge rectification. But in this case, we're just going to talk about full wave because it's the most common, particularly when using a tube rectifier. And in a full wave rectification circuit, you're going to have a power transformer that is typically center tapped. Whereas you can see here, the center tap is going to ground and you're going to have essentially two halves of the secondary. So you may have a total voltage swing of about, let's use 700 volts between the top and the bottom of the secondaries, but between the center tap to the top, you'll have the 350 volts, and from the center tap to the bottom, you'll have another 350 volts. And this is important because what ends up happening is the secondary produces those voltage waves, but they're going to be out of phase of each other, which is critical in making this full wave rectification circuit work. And you'll see that in just a minute. So the two sources of voltage coming off of the secondaries of the power transformer will then be fed into the two plates of the tube rectifier that's acting as essentially two diodes. They will be tied together to a common cathode on the other side of the tube rectifier. And what ends up happening in the purpose of a rectifier or purpose of a diode is that it only allows current to flow in one direction depending on the way it's facing. So in this case, we are only going to get the positive half of the current and the waveform of this voltage coming out of the cathode of the tube rectifier. And because they're out of phase of each other, the two halves going in, we're going to get all the positive humps of both halves of those waveforms put together as one. So that gets us an AC voltage wave that is comprised of all the positive humps of the two original out of phase voltage waves coming off the secondary of the power transformer. Of course, we can swap out the tube rectifier for two solid state diodes that will perform the exact same function. The leads to the secondary or the power transformer will be connected to the two diodes, which will then be connected together by a common connection, which will result in the same AC voltage waveform with only the positive humps of the original waveforms. But where do we go from there? We still don't have smooth, flat DC voltage. So what we need to do is we need to fill in the gaps between those humps. Enter the electrolytic capacitor. It is a device that can store electric charge over time. And what it does is as the voltage comes in and runs through the electrolytic capacitors, it will store that voltage and it will discharge over time as the AC voltage dips and fill in the gaps between the humps. And what this does, along with a couple of other components like the filter choke and other power resistors, will provide us ultimately with a flat, smooth DC voltage line that can now be used by the amplifier to power the tube stages downstream. 
At this time, it's important to point out that one of the main differences between a tube rectifier and a solid state rectifier is that the DC voltage that is created and made available to the amp downstream will be higher with the solid state rectifier than the tube rectifier by a degree of about 15 to 20 volts, depending on the rectifier tube. That's really due to the internal properties of the tube rectifier, internal resistance and things like that, that create that voltage sag and voltage drop that brings it down by comparison to the solid state rectifier. Also, the tube rectifier will actually be a little slower in filling in those gaps between the humps, but we're talking about microseconds and nanoseconds. That's why the solid state rectifier has the feel of that firmer, quicker response to it, because it's a little faster than the tube rectifier in filling in those gaps and providing the voltage downstream. So for the example we used earlier with the 700 volt secondary with the 350 center tap, that would probably translate to about 460 volts DC with the tube rectifier and about 475 volts DC with the solid state rectifier. One last important thing to note. Most amps, if not all of them, and definitely all sonic tone amps have warnings printed clearly on all of them about the dangers of electric shock. It is mainly because of these electrolytic capacitors in the power supply. They store tremendously high levels of voltage and they store them over time. Even when the amp is off and unplugged, they will continue to store voltage until they are properly and safely discharged. That's why it's very important never to open up an amp or touch the inside of the amp because you never know what kinds of levels of high voltage may be stored in these electrolytic capacitors. So let's take a closer look at the components we've been talking about. What does a tube rectifier look like? It looks like any normal tube, but there are some differences. It is basically a diode. At this point, it's two diodes. The two pins on the bottom by my finger are the pins to the plates, pins four and six, which comprise the two diodes that then connect to the common cathode. So that is a tube rectifier in a nutshell. So this is what a solid state rectifier would look like. It's simply two solid state diodes. Very simple and you would need two of them to replace the tube rectifier and they would do the same job. The tube rectifier may start at about 20 bucks and go up from there. These guys are gonna start at under a dollar and go from there. So that's just to give you perspective on tube rectifiers and their solid state counterparts. Enter the electrolytic capacitor. This is the component that stores the electric charge that fills in those gaps of AC and helps convert it into DC voltage, getting it ready for the amp to use down the line. This is actually a multi-can capacitor. It's two large capacitors and one with a common ground tab. Alright, so here we are with the Sonic Tone Half Pint, which has a tube rectifier, solid state rectifier switch. Currently, we're on the tube rectifier setting, and we're going to be on clean line first. I'm going to play a couple of passages, and then we're going to switch to the solid state rectifier, and I'm going to stay on clean line and play the same passages. So let's see if we can hear a difference. Okay, so now let's go on the dirty channel, channel two, and we'll do the same thing. We're gonna start on the tube rectifier and then switch to the solid state rectifier and see if we can hear a difference. <laughs>
So there you have it, a couple of passages on clean and distortion, both of them each using the tube rectifier and the solid state rectifier. I hope that you can hear the difference through the video. I definitely feel like in the room and playing, I could feel and hear the difference. I felt like on the tube rectifier, everything was a little more well-rounded and smooth as I played and the way that the notes kind of came to me as I hit the strings with the pick. I felt once I switched to the solid state rectifier, everything was way more immediate and aggressive as I hit the strings with the pick. It was like, there's the notes, you know? You know, it's for your taste and for you to decide which one's best for you. Uh, it depends on the amp for me, which one I like. Uh, some amps, I do like the tube rectifier more. I think it gives it a little more of a juicy sound. And if I want to be a little more aggressive, then I'll be on the solid state rectifier. So there you go. So that's it for this video on rectification and the differences between a tube rectifier and a solid state rectifier. I hope this video helped you to better understand the differences between the two and so that you can apply that knowledge to your plane and select the best rectifier for what you need. Check back here for more videos as we make them, and we thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.